Second Corinthians 1, okay? It's the second part, the chapter 1. So uh, we want to um, um, uh, just a little debris, you know, uh, um, what we talked, you know, last week. There is something related with this. It's like a, um, a Paul was writing down, okay, in First Corinthians 1, or oh, First Corinthians, writing in Ephesus. So then uh, he says to them in the end of this letter that he want to go and visit them, okay, want to go to Corinth, okay, in the way because he need to go to Macedonia. He wanted to go over here. So he said, in my way to Macedonia, I want to step over there, and in my way back, I want to do the same. I want to be twice. Once when I go there, and once when I come back, okay? But the visit that he had, it wasn't the best visit. He was, the, the, he called the painful visit. And we're not, you know, talk about this later, but uh, it was the painful visit. It wasn't the best thing. So he decided, because it wasn't so good, he decided that instead of coming back again, he go directly, you know, from Macedonia, you know, to Ephesus, instead of passing again. For because of that reason, uh, the people who are always looking for something, you know, against uh, Paul, you know, to, to discredit him, he said, look, you said you want to pass, and you didn't do it. So whatever you say is a lie, okay? He's kind of that lie, okay? They kind of discredit him because of uh, he doesn't, he didn't do what he said he's going to do, okay? And want to explain, you know, also what happened. And why? Because since the beginning, for the current, uh, the people in Corinth or the church in Corinth, Paul, he wasn't, uh, or they think they wasn't a, a, an apostle. He, they thinking that the apostle was, you know, Peter, John, those who was with, with the Lord, okay? The 12, would be the, or the 11, okay, and the 12. But Paul, no. So Paul was a little, you know, it's not that important. It's like a, so he need to defend himself. So it's, Two things that he wanna uh, wanna found here in the in the rest of the Second Corinthians one, and it's two these two things. One, we wanna explain why he couldn't uh, uh, pass, or he didn't say what he gonna do, that he didn't pass again, you know, to Corinth. And second one is why he is an apostle, and and what does that mean? So that's that the two things that we go. You wanna focus in that. That's the two things that we're trying to explain, or he's trying to explain to the Corinth, okay? Mm. So we start kind of in the last thing that we, we um, um, talked, you know, last, last week, that is the suffering that he had, okay? So it says, 2 Corinthians 1, 8 and 9, says, Brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the hard times we have in Asia Minor. Asia Minor is not what we consider, you know, right now, Asia. It's more this area. This area, Asia Minor is around this area, kind of kind of like here, okay? So it's a, a part of what we call right now Turkey, okay? So that's not a, the whole Asia, okay? So it says, uh, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the hard times we had in Asia Minor. We were having a lot of trouble. It was far more than we could stand. Who even thought we were going to die. Nine, in fact, we felt as if we were under a sentence of death. But that happened so that we would not depend on ourselves, but on God. He raises the dead of life. So uh, right now, uh, what does uh, Paul is write it down is the first, you know, second Corinthians, the first part. He's saying, look, I have a, a lot of trouble, okay? And it's not for God. I wasn't be able, you know, to write it down this to you. That, that's that's kind of what they say. And if you go, you could see in the book of Acts all the trouble that they have, you know, all the bad, we say the, uh, we call the hard times, the hard times. He said, we have a really hard times. And uh, it's kind of fun because uh, we're uh, in um in the Sunday school, you know, talking also the hard times, okay? What the hard times is, you know, we have. So we know that in our life we have hard times, okay? And then what we uh, get last week was that in those hard times, God gives us comfort, okay? So we comfort other ones. 
Okay, that's, that's kind of thing. It's not only to receive it and see, thank you, God, you know, for giving that comfort. But say, no, 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 I give you that, so you could give it to somebody else, okay? So that, that's kind of, you know, the line. So right now, he continues saying, look, we have a hard time. Look, at this, this is not easy what I'm doing. It's not easy. So we're having a hard time. And what else he says? He says, God has saved us from deadly dangers. And he will continue to do it. No, he will continue to do it. We have put our hope in him. He will continue to save us. 11, you must help us by praying for us. Then many people will give thanks because of what will happen to us. Then they will thank God for his kindness to us in answer to the prayers of many. So, if we want to put attention in this, all the whole passage, this one is so important because he's saying to, to them, look, we're having a hard time. We're having a hard time, but God is saving us. See? He's saving us from daily dangers, things that already happened. Because he's, he's saying, you know, we have dangers in many places in Asia Minor, so we are alive, so God save us. So if we're here right now, all the problems that we have before, he saved us because we're here, okay? And then what does I say? And he will continue to do it. What does that mean? That the present ones that we have, he will help us. And not only that, he says, we have put our hope in him. What does that mean? If we believe in God, if we believe in Christ, then they say, he will continue to save us. So, the protection of, of the Lord to us, it not only happened because we are alive, oh, we're okay, okay, we're okay right now. No, it's what happened before, what happened right now, and that, that thing that would happen. If we believe in the Lord, he will know what to do. He doesn't say over here that we're not going to die because sooner or later we're going we're gonna to die. But he, what he's saying, like he take care of us before, he takes care of us right now. He will take care of us later in the way that he could do it. No, maybe not the way that we want, but in the way that he could do it, he could take care of us. So we could be able to trust in him, okay, that because we believe in him and we follow him, whatever happened, that happened. People who doesn't accept Jesus yet, okay, imagine you're a person who doesn't accept Jesus yet. You're sitting here. So you also need to, you also can say, well, God saved me, okay, for my past. It's what I say, when I uh, become a Christian, when, when I was 26, I, I didn't involve God in my decisions. I always tried to do my best, or the best that I, 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 I think. I was thinking that I could do better decisions for my life than God, okay? I was thinking, if I go to God, oh, he's going to make me suffer, so no, I'm going to make a better decision with my life. So I live my life, selfish way, trying to do my best. And around the culture that I live, okay, trying to make decisions, you know, by my own. And it wasn't that good. And I could say that a few times, God saved me from really bad accidents for my decisions. I could say that. But then, I was 26, and I said, well, God saved me for all my past. And I say. And, 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 and still saving me. And what it says, we, if we have put our hope in him, he will continue saving us. What it says, now I accept, when I was 26, I accept Jesus in my heart, and then I'm with him, and he's going to save me in my future. So we need to understand that it's not only this is, uh, this is the three, uh, it's not only one Time that God's gonna save you, gonna gonna save you, and gonna give you the time or the, or the, the way that He thinks you know for us. Okay, so and then later, another thing is important. They say you must help us. Oh, you must you must help us. How can the Corinthians you know help uh, 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 Paul? You must help us by praying for us. Then many people will give thanks because of what will happen to us. They will thank God for his kindness to us 
in answer to the prayers of many. So even though the, uh, the, the church in Corinth didn't believe that he could be uh, an apostle, or he looking for ways to discredit him, Paul saying to them, thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your prayers, because maybe because of your prayers, we're still here. The prayers go to the Lord, and the Lord, you know, do his will. It's not like that. It's not because we pray, something going to happen. No, we pray to the Lord, so do his will. Okay? So they say, thank you for the, for the prayers. So sometimes we don't know all the power of the prayers, because we don't see them. Okay? We just maybe... We always say, well, take care of that. Or when we pray for the people here, or when uh, you read the, uh, the prayer chain, you say, okay, I want to pray for that person. But you don't know in the, in the spiritual uh, 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 things what, what's happening, what's really happening. But over here, um, uh, Paul said to the Corinthians, Lord, thank you for your prayers, because maybe because of your prayers, I'm still alive. Of course, it's God to save us, but your prayer is important. And say, you must help us by praying for us. He doesn't know if help or not, but thank you for your prayers. So we don't need to forget about the prayers that we make. Sometimes it's not an easy way, you know, to pray. Like a, um, I remember in YWAM, we have a, from 8 to 9, each day we have something. You know, we start at 8. So at 8 we have a, a Monday was worship. Okay, we have a worship, uh, so sing songs from 8 to 9. Then Tuesday was uh, uh, intercession. It means to pray for people and other missionaries, people of, you know, from the, the world, you know, kind of thing. Then uh, Wednesday, we have, I think, one of one, something like that. And then Thursday is prayers. Just make a prayer, and then when I, I get the NYPK, just make your petition known, and you put your own, you know, uh, uh, problems or, or, or dealing, and then people pray for you. So that is kind of, each thing is happening. When more people be there is when it's the worship. Worship is always full. Prayers, not that much. I don't understand that. I don't understand that because I'm one of those people. When it's worship, like, oh, okay, we're going to go and hear some songs, okay? But then when it's prayer, it's like a, ah, <sighs> I'll be there, you know, and sometimes sleeping, you know, kind of. I understand that. I was one of them. Prayer is not was my, the best thing, okay? But I think it's, 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 it's important, okay? So, so I start, you know, on Wednesday, you know, to do the prayers. And it's because of that. Sometimes it's okay that you pray by yourself. That's okay. It's God in the end. Pray by, your, by yourself. Pray uh, when you're driving. Pray in, in a group. Pray all the time. Because it's so important the way that we talk to the Lord to do his will in others. And they say, yeah, but God is going to do it. You're praying or not praying. You, you never know. So you do your part, and God is going to do his part. But uh, the prayer is so important in our life because the way that we communicate with him. And we're trying to do our best. We pray, and we don't see exactly you know, how it's happening, but uh, uh, Paul is saying, you must help us by praying for us. Okay? Maybe yes, maybe not. <laughs> but he encouraged us. Paul encouraged you know, the, the, the church in Corinth you know, to pray. Pray in, you know, in the day, in the night, when you woke up, when you're driving, when uh, we're with people, without people. With... His prayer is so important in our life. Because we trying to do God's will. And sometimes when we intercede for somebody else, when we pray for others, we go up with the Lord, so Lord do that will in the other people. So, um, then, okay, then um, Paul continued, you know, talking to them. And, and, and we're going to go to the, to the point that they don't believe that uh, Paul should be called an apostle. And they say, like, a, what is your credential? Like, a, Paul, we're... we're why we need to call you apostle? Why you call apostle? What are your credentials? You know, we want like a, a, a letter from, uh, from Peter, okay, that you're an apostle. Or, or they want something, you know, to, to touch that they say, yeah, I'm apostle. That's because of this. What Paul says over here, says uh, 2 Corinthians 1, 12 
through 14 say, now this is our boast. Our conscience testify that we have conducted ourselves in the world, and especially in, your, in, and especially in our relationship with you. With integrity and godly sincerity, we have done so relying not on worldly wisdom, but in God's grace. 13, for we do not write you anything cannot read or understand. And I hope that as you have understood us in part, you will come to understand fully that you can boast of us just as we just as we will boast on you in the day of the Lord Jesus. But as Paul is saying over here, look, you, okay, the way that we relate with you, we come over here, and, and I'm really proud of this thing he's saying, that I bring the gospel to you. And I try to, you know, make it clear, uh, it is, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do uh, in a godly and sincere way, integrity. I'm trying to bring, you know, as, as a better I can. And the relation that I have with you, okay, he say that you are the reason what I'm a called apostle. If you didn't exist, okay, then you could say, like, okay, you're not an apostle. But because you exist, I'm an apostle. I don't need anything to sign it, you know, to say that I'm an apostle. Because you are the reason why I'm an apostle. And then what it says, because when you get it, right now you get it a little bit, but when you get it fully and you understand this, you also want to be pride or want to be proud about um, uh, 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 what you understand and what, and what you're receiving from the Lord. And when the Lord come, now you will say, thanks, you know, for, for you to be here. Like, a, like the, 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 um, the Corinthians would say, when he understand the whole, the whole thing and what God is doing, they will say, thanks, uh, Paul, what were you doing? I'm, 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 a, I'm a proud that um, Paul came and teach us and do this. That's what Paul is saying to them. He's saying, look, um, uh, I understand that you don't believe in me, that you want something signed in to believe that I'm an apostle, but I say, you are the reason that I'm an apostle. And when you understand the whole thing, you will thank God, you know, for this. This is one thing, I say. Then say later, because I was confident of this, I want to visit you the first. This is now, is want to defend why he didn't uh, pass again, like a, he didn't, you know, return to Corinth, you know, when he go back to Ephesus. It says, because I was confident of this, I want to visit you first so that you might benefit twice. Okay, two times, but was only. 16, say, I want to visit you on my way to Macedonia and come back to you from Macedonia. And then to have you send me on my way to Judea. 17, I was like, when I intend to do this, or do I make my plans in a worldly manner so that in the same breath I say both yes, yes, and no, no? Over here is saying, yes, I understand that I say that I'm going to go twice. In my way there and my way back. And I didn't do it. Okay, I didn't do it. But don't, because I changed my mind on doing this, don't tell me that I'm a liar. Don't tell me that my yes is like a no and my no is like a yes. It's not like that. And people always trying to get something from him in order to discredit him. Okay? It's like a, you're trying to do whatever you can, but these people who are anti-Paul, okay, who are trying to get him in this thing. Okay? These little lies is what they say. And he said, but uh, 2 Corinthians 1, 18 to 20 say, but as surely as God is faithful, our missions to you is not yes and no. I want to stop over there. Paul first says, you know, you're thinking, I know what I say. I say in the last letter, 1 Corinthians, that I'm going to go visit you twice. And I only did it once. Okay? And you're thinking that I'm a liar because of this. But he says, and now he put God. He put God in this thing. And says, but surely as God is faithful, our message to you is not yes and no. He's trying to say, I do this, okay, and now I put God as a, as a witness in this. 
19. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, by me and Silas and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him it was always been yes. 20. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of, to the glory of God. So over here is saying, look, the same way like uh, that God is faithful, okay? And the thing that we shared with you was the truth, was the faithful, they do, we do the best, you know, with you. The same way they say, uh, the son of, uh, for the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you, okay? By, they say, by me, and Silas, and Timothy. And then it was not yes and no. It was, oh, uh, this is yes, this is no. This is always yes, he says. Uh, but in him was always being yes. For no matter how many promises God had made, they are yes in Christ. So what uh, Paul is saying, yes, I said that I'm going to go and come back. I'm going to explain that later, he said. But the same way, like uh, I try to do okay with the Lord, I want to be honest with you. Okay? He said, I put God in, in, in whatever I say. Over here, and you will see later on why. Um, I say, I put God in the decision that I make, and he knows why. So over here, first of all, he's saying, yes, I, I am a, I'm an apostle, and you are the reason why I'm an apostle. Second one, yes, I said I want to go twice. I only be once, but I want to explain you why. But it's not because I'm a liar. That's the two things that he's trying to convince them, you know, about it. Okay? And it says... Now, uh, 1 Corinthians 1, 21 and 22 says, now it, is good. now it is God who makes both us and you stand firm in Christ. He anointed us. He set his seal of ownership on us and put his spirit on our hearts and the, as a deposit guarantee what is to come. Over here, what the Paul is saying, uh, they say, now it is God who makes both us and you stand firm. They say, the same God that I serve is the same God that you serve. Even though the, the Corinthians, the, the church in Corinth doesn't behave well, okay, he say, no, the same way that I am uh, stand firm, you stand firm. Okay, it, does, it doesn't uh, uh, may, trying to make him like a higher than them. He said, no, we're the same way that you, uh, both of us, you and I stand firm, okay, in Christ. And they say, he anointed us. When we hear about anointing, the anointing one, okay, in the Old Testament, he's talking about the anointing one, okay? You could hear about the anointing one. And they say, oh, this person... Why? Because over here he's talking about the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit come and then leave. And then go on with a few ones, okay? The, the Holy Spirit doesn't live in the hearts until Jesus died, go to heaven, and send the Holy Spirit. Before that, the Holy Spirit appear and disappear, okay? Here and there with the anointing one, okay? But he says, since Jesus die we have the holy spirit all the time he come and and, and and is with us so we have something in common the same way that was anointing once you know the 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 the, the kings or or the or the uh, prophets or those one who are the anointing one they say now we are the same level like them with the anointing one because we have the holy spirit in us like a, okay, so sometimes, you know, you could start thinking of that, oh, the anointed one, okay, he's closer to the Lord, because he's, uh, you know, I remember when I was a, a missionary, the people want that I pray for them. I go and preach or, or share, or, pray for me, because you're close to God. I say, uh, no. I'm the same distance as you, okay? But the Paul is saying the same thing. Look, the same way that you could talk to the Lord, 
is I could talk to the Lord. We're in the same level. We're the anointing ones. I'm not special because I have a different job than you. Okay? You, we are in the same level with the anointing ones. The same level as the prophets, as the kings, or those ones who was anointed, we're in the same level. Is what Paul is saying to the people in Corinth, even though they don't behave him. They don't like him. And he say, look, just because you believe in Christ, you are the anointing ones. So what I do when the people say, you know, pray for me, like, I pray for them. You know, but I, I say to them, you are not closer than him that, that the closer they could be. I have a different job, okay? And I'm trying to guide you to him. So you could feel that you're the anointing one, so you could be a, a, a direct um, uh, relationship with him, not through me. And, and you know, Paul explained that also. Um, so in this, in this place, it says, he anointed us. So all of us are anointed, just because we follow Christ. We are on the same level that the Old Testament people who are arriving in there. Then 22, set his seal of ownership on us. He sealed us, okay? I don't know. Uh, normally, you know, when, when, when they seal, you know, it's two things, you know, come to my mind. One thing is those letters, okay, who are sealed, you know, so that's why uh, uh, they have a, um, the kings, you know, have a, a ring. And then when they send a letter, okay, they, they like that, and they put uh, wax, and then put the, 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 uh, the ring in order to be sealed, okay? So they know that it's not open, okay? It's sealed, okay? So it says, God, do that to you. He's sealed, okay? So they're not open. But then also come to my mind, and it's not offense, okay? It's when the, the cows, okay? The cow was, how do you call this? Like it's, they put, uh, they, Brand. yes, okay, yes. When the cow, you know, the, the, the owner, so sometimes they, not sometimes, I think all the time, I don't know. Mexico all the time, but I don't know here. But uh, they, they put over here, you know, the, the initials of the owner. They go on and, and then, you know, uh, warm, you know, this thing and put, okay? That's kind of sealed, okay? You could see it that way. Yeah, we could, you could be sealed like that with the Holy Spirit. When Jesus died, said, you know, Right now, I only with you, you know, the, the 12, and also with a little more, you know, disciples. But, but Jesus says, it's good for me if I go to heaven, because if I go to heaven, I will send you the helper, okay? That is the Holy Spirit. And now I not only want to be with you, but I want to be with everyone. I want to stay with him. So you have the Holy Spirit because you're sealed. First of all, you're anointed one, and also you're sealed. Okay, you are part that is below. You belong to Christ. You belong to Christ. What that means, you know, when the, the cow you see it, you know, so, oh, you, you know who it belongs to. Okay, I don't know. There's many owners need to be like I don't know. But anyway, but that when you see that, you see what the owner is. So it's what he's saying. He sealed you, so he, you should know who who you. Who's your boss, okay? Who's your owner, okay? That is God. And the third part, it says, um, and he put his spirit, the Holy Spirit, in our heart as a deposit guarantee what is to come. Many of you know what a deposit is, okay? And a guarantee deposit. It means you want to buy something, so you put a, a deposit, okay? Because you want it. Okay? And I don't know... Uh, here, but uh, when we put money in, on something, it's because we're interested, interested in on it. Okay, if we don't put money, we can say, yeah, I want it, I want it, I want it. But you put money on it, means you 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 want it. When I start um, uh, the uh, the echo the echo uh, school in 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 Y1, um, they need to deposit. So make a deposit. Uh, in the beginning, we do say, "Oh no! When you come to make to do the school, you you give us the whole money because if you transfer, maybe you wanna lose some money, and also you don't have a, a visa, so you don't have a visa. 
uh, we don't want to return the money later. So what's a little bit of uh, confusion. So we say, no, we want to give you, we want to send you the letter to the, um, to the embassy that you're going to come and do this school, you know, with us. You know, the, the school, the ECHO, is English and Cultural Orientation. So the people in other countries, we send the letter so they could go to the embassy and then say, look, I'm going to study over there uh, English. So they come and, and, and they give the visa. And we're thinking, when you get the visa, you fly, let us know when you came, and then uh, uh, you pay us the whole amount in order to send money and things like that. The first school that we make, 30, we prepare for 30 people that we're going to pack. We will always say no to a few ones because they say that they want to come. When I finally, the day that I need to pick it up in the airport was, I don't know exactly, but at least 10 of them didn't show up. And I go, huh? What happened? Well, they didn't get a deposit, <laughs> okay? They said they want to come. So I hope, I hope that when they say they're coming over here, they give the, the, the visa and they didn't show up. So imagine where they are. So for us, it's like a, wait a minute, what's kind of like a, first of all, you know, disappointment, okay, because they didn't show up, and we prepared all the beds and, and everything, you know, everything was prepared for them to come and they didn't show up. And then later, a little anger to say, like, look, we sent you this letter to the embassy because you're going to come over here to stay with us, and you didn't do it. And it was a little bit of frustration, and then, and, then, and then when I appeared, I said, well, <laughs> if they don't put money on it, Sometimes they don't, it's not like a really interested on it. So what happened next time? Okay, you need to deposit a certain amount of money for us to send you this letter for the embassy. Well, we then, you know, he sends the money, and then we keep the money until they say yes or no for the, for, the, for the visa. If they say no, we return the money. If they say yes, we keep the money and then come back with the rest. And with that thing, all the people who put money arrive to the airport. So what does that mean? You put money on it, if you are, it means that's gonna happen. So what it says over here that he deposit, is what it says, uh, and put his spirit in our heart. The Holy Spirit put in our heart as a deposit, as saying, look, this is mine, okay? I wanna put my spirit over there. I, I, I give the, uh, um, uh, I put some money on it, or I, uh, because that is going to happen in the end. Because I know what is happening in the end. I'm going to keep paying until the whole, uh, uh, not only a deposit, but the whole amount. So that is the Holy Spirit mean to us. It's a deposit from the Lord who's saying, this is mine. Okay, I pay a little bit right now, but I want to pay complete. I want to pay it, I do the deposit, because I'm interested in this person, okay? That, but I send it to the Holy Spirit. But I want to pay the whole thing. If we, oh, I want to put the same example. All of the people who put a deposit in the Echo School that I was, they came. If we as a human could do that, imagine God. He put, He sent the Holy Spirit for us to tell us, "You are anointed. You're anointed. You are sealed." Okay, I bought you, and not only that but I put some uh, price to you that I will finish the payment for you. So that is what us, Paul is telling the people in Corinth that they, the value that they have. Even though they wasn't agree with him, even though they're looking for something you know, to discredit him, he said to him, he's, he's, he's writing over here, look, you're anointed one, you're sealed, and God put a deposit with the Holy Spirit to put in you. And he want to finish the payment. He will finish the payment. Okay? So, with this, it's not, it's not only criticizing or trying to defend himself. He's trying to let them know who they are. Who they are. Because sometimes we need to remind, be reminded again and again about who he is in us. Or, or what, what he represents from him. And then the end says... Um, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 23, 2 Corinthians 
uh, 1, 22 to, uh, to 24 says, I call God to be my witness. You know, I told you that the whole thing that he's talking to him is say, I didn't come back with you, okay? Because, uh, I want to explain later, um, but I put God as my witness, okay? I call God to be my witness. May he take my life if I'm lying, okay? May he take my life if I'm lying, okay? I could be dead if I'm saying lies in, in this letter. I, want, I wanted to spare, to spare you, so I didn't return to Corinth. 22, for your faith is not under our control. You remain strong in your own faith, but we work together with you for your joy. So over here, the first part, okay, the 23 says, I call God to be my witness. May he take my life and my life. I want to spare you so I didn't return to Corinth. He's saying, look, God is my witness. Why I didn't come back? I want to come back. But because it wasn't that good the first time, I, I say, I want you don't suffer or don't be worse, okay? The environment that we want to have, okay? Or the, or the thing that, uh, that's why I didn't come back. For your own sake, okay? For the, the sake of our relationship, I don't want, I didn't want to come back. And God know about this. You know, if I say lies, I could be dead right now. And say, and then the second part say, your faith is not under our control. What is it, what does God, what does uh, Paul is saying to them? Look, even though I'm the apostle, it doesn't mean that I'm on control of the relationship with the Lord. No, he says, uh, you remain strong in your own faith. It's you and the Lord. It's you and the Lord. I say, we, as I, when he's talking about uh, himself, we work together with you for your joy. In general, he was saying, look, I'm, I'm the apostle, and I'm trying to guide you to the Lord, okay? But guiding you to the Lord, it doesn't mean that I'm the middle. You are in a relationship with the Lord. And if we would have put right now, it's me as a pastor. I'm not in the middle of the relationship you have with the Lord. You and the Lord, have your, your faith with the Lord is you. Ah, the only thing that I do is work together with you to bring you closer to the Lord. When I was a missionary, is what I say to the people. And I say right now too. I go grab the hand of the person and bring it closer to the Lord. Two, two steps closer to the Lord. Okay? With the, whatever they experience, whatever they have, I go closer to the Lord. And then I leave the hand. I don't want to carry him all the way. No. I leave the hand. If they say it's enough, it's enough. In the end, he and the Lord, he have the same. And he did me again. Come back, give my hands. I'll get two steps closer. And then leave him. And it's, well, it's my job. That is my job. I try to work with those one who wants to work. In what? In getting closer to the Lord. It's the, the thing that I do here, even though it's my job, I really like it. <laughs> even though it's my job, it is, this is what it, I cannot force you to have a better relationship with the Lord. I cannot force you. You don't want to have a better relationship with the Lord. I'm not in the middle. Paul is saying to the Corinthians, I'm not in the middle. <laughs> you have a wrong relationship with the Lord. I'm not in the middle. It's what I'm saying to you too. I'm trying to do my best. I'm trying to visit you. I'm trying to pray for you. I'm trying to get in closer to the Lord. I, I, but you don't want to hold my hand? Don't hold it. <laughs> that, that's between you and the Lord. It want to be easy, you know, for me. <laughs> don't too much work. But uh, if you need it, I want to be available for you. That's the only thing that I could do. It be available for you. But in the end, it says, um, uh, you remain strong in your own faith. Is your faith and relationship with the Lord in the end. I don't to do my best in the position that I have. It's, it's, it's a job that I need to develop. Like you have your own job and you know what to do. And if I go over there and say, uh, okay, explain me a little bit what you're doing. Because I have no clue. Okay, I, they, you guide me what you're doing. It's the same thing that I'm doing over here. I spend more time over here. That I, that's why I'm trying to help you to be closer with the Lord. And I still learn, need to learn more than this. 
okay? But what I have, I think God knows, is enough for helping you because I'm in this position, and I think if I'm in this position, it's because God put me in this position. He thinks that my level is enough to bring you closer to the Lord. So it's what I want to do. But in general, in the end, it's going to be you and the Lord. And I try to work, I say, work together for your joy. Okay? Work together for you to be happy, to be closer to the Lord. That is what the Paul is telling to the Corinthians. Okay? Look, it says, uh, it's starting the, in the, in the, in the whole, you will, we will see the whole chapter. It says, look, we have a lot of troubles. Okay? We have a lot of problems. Okay? And God is going to come for you because he wants you to come for somebody else. And they say, and thank you for your prayers, okay? Because we have a lot of troubles. So thank you for your prayers. But maybe your prayers, you know, save me so I'll be able to be here. So keep praying. And then say, um, uh, I'm not in the middle, okay? Even though I'm apostle, says Paul. Even though, you know, I write all the letter and everything. And I see, you know, the Lord. But I'm not in the middle, okay? I'm not in the middle between you and the Lord. It's you and the Lord. And trying to, we're trying to do the best to accomplish that. So what I want to give you as a, as a homework, you could see the homework for this week, you could get it, is first of all, pray, pray. Pray for someone that you could comfort. The same way that God comfort you, pray for someone that you could comfort, you know, this week. Pray and say, God, you know, show me someone that I could comfort him. Okay, it could be something from the, from the congregation, it could be something for your family, it could be some friend, whatever, but... Bring, that God bring you someone in mind that you could comfort this week. And understand that your relationship with the Lord, it depends on you. Your decision uh, uh, to follow the Lord, and if you need help, okay, I try to be available. That's, that's the main thing. I want to be available for you, because that's kind of my job, but in the end, it's you and the Lord. So, um, in this week, pray for someone that you could comfort at the same way that God already comforted you. And, uh, and of course, we have a lot of problems, okay? And, and someone have uh, more than others. So um, if God comfort us, we'll be able to comfort. And, you know, and don't remember, you remember, you know, who you are. You know, uh, 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 Paul is telling you, okay, you are anointed, you're sealed. You have a guarantee God believe in you, okay? Sometimes we don't believe in ourselves, but God believes in us. And he knows that we could do able to do his will. So, let's pray. Father, thank you so much, you know, for today. Thank you for explaining us a little bit, you know, how, how is the relationship, you know, that, that we need to have with you. That is all responsibility, but at the same time, we have people around even in the congregation, even in the pastoring, or maybe others who are close, who are um, uh, 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 been in that step before us, that could help us, okay? So please, the same way that you comfort us, okay? Put in our mind who we could pray to open the door that we could be able to comfort others. Let us uh, not only hear your words, but also be doers of, of your word, that we could put in practice what we learn. Please uh, um, bless this church, bless the heart, bless, bless the um, generosity, bless the willingness, you know, to do and, and stay here. So please uh, uh, be with them, help them to do your will in their life. In the name of Jesus, amen. So now you could stand, the one who can. Let's do the benediction. It says, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord may his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen.